uh, one of the illustrations of John Piper in his sermon, Don't Waste Your Life, is uh, where uh, the two missionaries uh, who spend their life of making Christ known uh, died in a car accident. And he asked a question there, was that a tragedy? Of course, we know that is not a tragedy because of the better life that awaits them in the future. Well, as mentioned earlier, my report this morning is about the eschatology of John Calvin. Well, in the time of Reformation, uh, eschatology uh, seems under emphasized, no? same as the Christian hope in the kingdom of God. Well, eschatology discusses what believers are hoping for, for them personally and for the world, and what carries them through life. And eschatology does not merely pertain to the ending of time, but also to reality and the coming of the kingdom of God. Uh, Calvin rejects the uh, belief of the Anabaptist, which is the soul sleep, and he has a contemplation about the immortality of the soul. Just well, number to po. At, up. Uh, Calvin's rejection of uh, Kiliasam. Kiliasam is a doctrine associated, associated with the apocalypticism of the age. Well, Calvin considers that such form of Kiliasam are a childish fiction. In his institute, he said, Surely after the Kilias arose, who limited the reign of Christ to a thousand years, this fiction is too puerile to need or to deserve refutation, nor do they reserve any countenance from the apocalypse, from which it is known that they extracted a gloss for their error. Since the thousand years their mention referred not to the eternal blessedness of the church, but only to the various troubles which await the church in church militant in this world. Well, the thousand years uh, for, for Calvin must obviously not be taken literally, but represent a very long time. And Cal Calvin also contemplated about, uh, about the future life, of the future life. Well, for Calvin, Christian life is a life lived in imitation of Christ. In his institute, he said, Christ is set before us as a model, the image which, which our lives should express. Well, life should be characterized by self-denial. No? We deny ourselves because we belong to God. And self-denial means bearing the cross to reflect the pattern of Christ in Christian lives. Each must bear his own cross. In his institute, he said, those whom the Lord has been chosen and honored with this intercourse must be prepared for a hard, laborious, troubled life, a life of many and various kinds of evils, it being the will of our Heavenly Father to exercise His people in this way while putting them to the proof. Having begun this course with Christ the firstborn, He continues it towards all His children. Well, by striving toward God as our goal must be understood in connection with the eschatological motive of our blessed hope. Well, self-denial and cross-bearing is the immediate context for Calvin's meditation on the future life. Because life is a struggle, the thought of the crown that awaits the believer causes him to raise his eyes to heaven. Calvin also advocates contempt for the present life. In his institute, whatever be the kind of tribulation with which we are afflicted, we should always consider the end of it, that we may be trained to despise the present and thereby stimulated to aspire to the future life. Well, this is not primarily rooted in a body-soul dichotomy, but are to be found in a contrast between the present life under the cross and the future life of the heavenly kingdom. Uh, he does not advocate a rejection of the present life as such, but contempt means only a rejection of what is evil and a recognition that true life must be sought in Christ. In his commentary in Philippians 3 verse 20, nothing is to be reckoned or reckoned of any value except God's spiritual kingdom because believers ought to live heavenly in this or heavenly life in this world. Uh, Calvin's interpretation of prophecy and eschatology. Uh, Calvin interprets prophecy 
in light of its fulfillment in Christ. For example, in Isaiah 26 verse 19, uh, which said, Thy dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. Now, rabbis think it will be fulfilled in the Messiah's first coming, and the Christian interpreters limit it to the last judgment. Uh, Calvin said here, the prophet includes the whole reign of Christ from beginning to the end. Well, uh, prophecies find their fulfillment in Christ. Second example is Matthew 24, verse 27. For as the lightning comes from the east, and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Well, this is a promise that Jesus will suddenly extend the borders of his kingdom to the farthest of the earth, or to the farthest end of the earth. This is not simply a promise to be fulfilled at a future date, rather, it has already been fulfilled in the spread of the gospel. The kingdom of Christ and the Antichrist. Well, the various perspectives in Calvin's basic eschatological outlook comes together in his discussion of the Antichrist. This reveals Calvin's refusal, refusal to calculate the uh, uh, time of uh, the return of Christ. And the central text for this discussion is 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Uh, Even though the day of the Lord is at hand, it is not now. Well, John Calvin's commentary on 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 2, he said... It is at hand in regard to God, with whom one day is as a thousand years. The basic thrust of eschatological teaching is not to produce calculation, but patience and hope. In Matthew 24, verse 4, in short, the preaching of the gospel is like sowing seed. We must patiently wait for the time of harvest. Well, we must keep in constant watch for him in such a way as not to limit him in any way to a particular time. Then the Antichrist. The Antichrist was viewed by Calvin as a kingdom controlled by Satan. Since the papacy rules in the church and their usurped powers belonging only to God, the papacy was in particular the vicar of Satan. Though this is not limited to the papacy because anyone who led believers from the truth was a part of that kingdom. Uh, the perspective concerning, concerning the slaying of the Antichrist. Antichrist will be completely and utterly, utterly destroyed when the final day has come. Christ will scatter the darkness in which Antichrist will reign. Well, the, the point is the victory of Christ over Antichrist was, or, is already occurring, occurring and can be seen in history. Well, John Calvin uh, provides a good example of the role of biblical eschatology in, the, in Christian thought and life. As an application, we must teach and be reminded that we have enemies you know, to face against until the return of Christ. And Christ's merits were sufficient to save sinners. Thus, our hope for the resurrection of the body is certain when he returns. And we, we must not be tempted to believe in the calculation of the return of Christ, but we must wait patiently. And that's the end of my report. Explain, but if you know, um, plural kingdoms of Christ, that number five. Uh, uh, because the uh, kingdoms of Christ, I think, the story is, it is a spiritual kingdom. My question, but plural, there's only one kingdom. Lang. Explain further yung Calvin advocates contempt for the present life. Opo. Uh, because for Calvin, uh, this uh, uh, life is a medium of sinfulness and uh, corruption. And yung he yung sinabi niya pong contempt ay yun nga po, ang ibig sabihin niya is uh, it is a contrast between the present life under the cross and uh, we must look, we must aspire dun po sa future life na mayroon po tayo which is better Does that mean uh, he despised this present life? Ay hindi po, hindi po uh, So what, what do you think was called this? Uh, Calvin's, although we cannot 
categorize Calvin's millennial position pero po the, base po sa kanyang interpretation po sa Revelation 20 verse 4 uh, na hindi niya po tinignan ito literally but figuratively uh, I can say po sana tama he is an amil po yung position niya Ayun po, uh, si Luther po kasi nung time niya ay uh, tinignan niya na yung pagdating po ni Kristo ay uh, darating even in, in his own lifetime. At si Calvin po ay uh, nag-focus lamang po siya sa, sa Word of God. 